I have a white husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no getting out of black no. tax, unfortunately. Nobody tells you what you should do once you're in a marriage. Yeah. Mm. Last year was really rough on us. Mm. How how do we scrape whatever it is that we need to to get to by? Get by. What's up besties and welcome to the first official episode of Marriage and Money where we share real life stories about money matters in a marriage. Today I'm going to be joined by a very familiar face to you guys. You have seen her on my vlogs, you have seen her on my socials. But if you're not sure who I'm talking about, I am actually referring to Aisha O'Reilly who goes by Aisha in Life on social media, Instagram and YouTube. Aisha has been married for a minute now and she's got a lot of stuff to share and I'm really excited to just sit down with her and actually get to know or find out how they've been doing it with her husband and help us navigate this journey of handling finances and money in our marriage. Aisha is a full-time social media influencer. She actually holds a bachelor's degree in advertising and marketing and a whole master's degree in creative advertising. So believe me when I say she knows exactly what she is doing and she does it so well. So Aisha, thank you so much for being here today and welcome to our video series. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Right? Yeah. I actually can't wait to hear what you have to say because you've been married for a minute and <laughs> we have just, just started this journey. And to be honest, it's scary yeah <laughs> for lack of a better word especially yeah. when it comes to money and you want to get it right because mm. we have three kids and we don't want our kids to be stuck in a situation where they have to fix our mistakes yeah. just to get by yeah. so i know i'm, I'm really <laughs> i'm really excited to hear what you guys are doing different because okay. you guys clearly are doing something different <laughs> but it, are we though i don't know i think a lot of people have this perception that we That's we've true. got something right and i think that's the case with a lot of people but i don't but you guys must be doing something right you know we used to joke with dizzy and say we've been together because before we got married we were together for like 11 years yeah right and we're like we haven't killed each other but it's because we always had the door the window something was open yeah you know <laughs> And now we're married and everything is closed. We have to make it work. Mm. And we have these family friends that just celebrated 24 years of marriage. And we're wow. like, and you haven't killed each other? Oh. So yeah. clearly you guys are doing something right. Yeah. So when I say to you, you guys are doing something right. I mean, three kids later, you guys are doing stuff. Like not just like stuff, like we yeah. see all that fun stuff. Yeah. Like you're actually doing things. <laughs> <laughs> and it's looking great so please share okay but before we get into the topic about money and marriage and mm. all that fun stuff can you tell us who is Aisha like who Ooh. is Aisha <laughs> How much time do we have? I know. <laughs> like, we could talk forever, but let's... <laughs> Who is Aisha? A summarized version of Aisha. A summarized version of Aisha. Okay, I am a creative. Came out of the womb creating things mm -hmm. from the get-go. Um, so that is my core sort of, like, passion, talent, whatever you want to call it. That is, like, the main hat that I wear. And then over and above that, of course, as you mentioned, I'm a wife. I'm a mom to three kids, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a friend, mm. um, and, an, and I am an entrepreneur mm. and digital content creator. Yeah, that's like a summary. It of. is a summarized version, true. <laughs> you guys, if we had to stay here and she tells us everything, we'll be here forever. <laughs> but like I said, we're going to be talking about marriage and money, so yeah. let's be disciplined. Yes. You're a wife. Yes. Right. How did you and your husband meet? <laughs> okay. So again, do you want the long story? <laughs> Just the long version. version. <laughs> Um, okay, so we met in high school, actually. Wow. Yeah. High school um, sweethearts. High school sweethearts, matric uh -huh. sweethearts. Um, so we, we actually met in 11th grade, but I don't really remember meeting him specifically. Because yeah. you know when you go to school with someone, you go to the same classes, it's not like an official meeting. You yeah. know what I mean? You just yeah. kind of know of each other. Mm -hmm. But then we started chatting to each other when we were in matric and yeah we fell in love in art class because he also took art and i took art it's both of our one of his many passions and my big passion and um yeah that's where we met and we've been together ever since and how long have you been married we've been married now for almost nine years wow yeah we've been together for 19 years wow yeah okay yeah all right you see what i mean when i say we gotta <laughs> learn stuff from you guys did you mm. guys have the conversation about money before you got married oh yeah for you sure did. yes 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 and how was that 
Um, there wasn't a conversation. It okay. was just a like a gradual thing. So I think, you know, looking back, it was such a blessing in disguise because we did long distance mm. for six years. Wow. So basically, I left South Africa. So we met here, okay? Mm. My parents sent me to Grahamstown for school. That's where I met my husband. And then when we matriculated, I left South Africa and I went to study in the UK. And um, we broke up for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> All of a week. Just a week. It was like the worst <laughs> week of my life. <laughs> and, you know, I just sort of said, hey, let's just give it a go and mm. see what happens. Mm. And then we we have not broken up since then. Yeah. So we really had to talk about money mm. up front because there was the whole, like the logistics of actually seeing each other mm. when I was in the UK and yeah. him being here in Joburg. It was like, okay, how are we going to do this? So money was always a very comfortable topic for us because it was the only way we were able to actually see each other. Yeah. You know, and obviously at that point we weren't married yet. We were mm. still dating and seeing each other mm. in love and everything but we we ha we knew that the only way to see each other is to combine yeah. whatever little money i had yeah what a, whatever little money he had so i could see him and he could see me yeah you know so was it a 50 50 thing or was it a kev you're the man okay now prove it to me that you're a man no. and pay for everything <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it wasn't even 50/50 either. It was like I know a ticket doesn't cost a thousand rand, yeah. right? But say for example, a ticket cost us a thousand rand mm. for him to fly from Joburg to to come and see me in the UK. Yeah. Let's say I had 200 rand, mm. he had 800. Mm. That's how we figured it out. Yeah. But sometimes I would have 800 rand and he'd only have 200, but we'd still put it together because yeah. at the end of the day the end goal was the same for both of us. We yeah. needed to see each other. Yeah. So whoever Whoever was doing better yeah. in terms of like the money that they were saving, they would fork up the most. Yeah. And then whoever wasn't doing as well would fork up what they Whatever could. Whatever they had. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't that feel weird? I mean, you get told a man should provide yeah. and a man should take care of a family. And you grew up seeing that as well. You mm. know, you see men come back from work, men come back with money and they're taking care of their families and their children. Mm. Didn't it feel weird for you to like say, this time I have 800 rand. Did you? ever pause and think for a minute like hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't mm -hmm. and I think maybe it's because you know how you're you're explaining this this was a concept that was never explicitly sort of taught to me mm. of course I definitely saw how my parents di you know sort of financial dynamic was yeah. and it was very much you know I love my parents mm. but I always knew that I didn't want to be in a situation where I couldn't like you know sort of support myself mm. you know so that was also a big reason why my education was so important mm. and i i didn't get married as soon as everybody was saying that we should get married because i was like no i need to focus on my education first mm. and so i could stand on my own two feet just in case yeah so yeah. i yes i was madly in love with him but i was also like you know life happens and i i shouldn't be depending on him yeah for everything and that included finances as well mm. and so we weren't in a in a in a marriage setup yet anyway mm. so i didn't mm. have those expectations on him yeah and again the the goal was to see each other yeah it yeah. just kind of felt like we have a joint goal how are we going to like get to it yeah i actually yeah. I, i'm admiring you just saying this because it's about the both of you guys yeah you know that's yeah. the bigger picture it's exactly. about making your relationship work mm -hmm. it's it's not about you know whoever told you let a man provide for you mm. or i shouldn't give a man money because it's a man and i'm a woman now yeah. he's gonna take advantage of me it's mm -hmm. about the bigger picture it's the bigger picture that's I exactly that. it i love that a lot and i feel like we need to we need to start focusing more on that because we get with social media we mm. get caught up in the my husband should provide or yeah. my boyfriend should pay for everything and then it complicates stuff people walk out of good relationships just because they didn't want to pay for the grocery mm. bill that month 
Mm. You know, mm. and it's a sad reality. And it's also an unknown thing because I don't know. And I'm saying I don't know, not I didn't know. Yeah. I don't know how to bring up the money topic. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. Just money topic in yeah, general is yeah. not something I'm comfortable doing. Really? Yeah, I know. It's so strange. But how would you say is an easier way to like bring up the money topic if if it's it is a topic? You know. I'm, you know now <laughs> I'm I'm also like I I don't know how. Yeah. Honestly, and it's no sort of offense to you or anybody watching. Mm. Personally, I find it very quite for lack of a better word, a yeah. bit bizarre. Yeah. That you will build, you will you will buy a house for someone. Yeah. You will enter a contract because marriage is a contract. It's a contract. It's yes. a contract. Yeah. You have children. You're making people yeah. with this person and you can't talk can't. about money. Yeah. For me, I think it's, it, that mm. for me is quite foreign to me because yeah. me and my husband, we talk about money all the time. Like, and it's, it's really no big deal yeah. at all. I yeah. know how much he earns. He knows how much I earn. Mm. I have access to his account he has access to my like it's there's nothing to hide yeah you know and but like how did you get to that point you know having access to bank accounts yeah i'll be honest this is very comfortable talking about money he's yeah. always the first one to say here you draw up the budget and i'm just like me yeah <laughs> like me you want me to yeah. drop your budget like think about that for a minute and let me know he's very comfortable with that i'm the one with the problem mm. so like how do you get to a point where you have access to the account like make my mind understand <laughs> please make me understand i'm trying to also pass myself back honestly again i'm gonna i'm going i think i'm going to refer back to our long distance relationship a mm. lot in our conversation because mm. again that really was a fa the foundation of how we looked at yeah. money his money is my money my money is his money it's mm. our money even when we bought our house we're mm. like how much you know is the our dream house going to cost for example and yeah. or the house that you know makes sense for us to to buy at this point in our lives x amount say it's a million rand you know it wasn't like okay babe you fork out all of that million rand Good work, please and you thank know, you <laughs> you know it, was, it wasn't like that it was like okay like he has you know for the deposit mm -hmm. he has 50k I have 20k for mm. example then mm. that's it we combine it that's our deposit mm. so we've always worked that way so when I moved down here after doing long distance for six years by then we were together for seven mm. and I moved here to be with him mm. so I didn't move here for fun yeah. you know I wasn't coming here to like hey let me see how it goes mm. it was like no mm. I'm moving here with the plan and the intention and the expectation yeah. that he was going to marry me yeah right um, and my mom even asked me before I left Tanzania, she's just like, what is he promising you? Because <laughs> yeah. obviously she, she was worried she, and she's, she's worried, a mom. Like, uh, yeah. You know, but um, I, I knew, I knew this was my guy. Mm. And I think also because we've had hard conversations other than money as well, mm. you know, um, I, I knew I was safe with him. Mm. And so I didn't have to ask him yeah. for access to his bank account mm -hmm. it was like okay we're going to the bank today i'm gonna put you as a you know what do you call it a co-signee yeah. on my account i'm yeah. like okay cool you know and mm -hmm. it was as simple as that like even today this morning it was like i couldn't find one of my bank cards yeah. so i was like babe can i get your card he's like yeah sure yeah it's that. no big deal at all because it's that. our money so if i'm broke we're broke. Everybody's broke. Everybody's There's no broke. You're broke There's not like, you broke. You know I'm <laughs> gonna get mangoes. <laughs> no. And we have those conversations because we've we've had um, people that we know, yeah. people in our circle who have had you know fallouts over this in mm. their marriages or relationships where it's like you know one person isn't doing as well and mm. the other one is still going out having dinners with people <laughs> and yes. clubbing and buying things and that and so me and Kev were just like. No, like we cannot be doing that. We can't. We can't be leaving the other person behind. Yeah, we're a partnership in this. Yeah. So if I'm broke, you're broke. Yeah. If you're doing well, I'm, I'm doing, doing well. well. And that's just how and it that's is. that's just how I it is. I think it's just also one of those things where it's not that I I don't know how to do it. Yeah, it's because I don't know how to do it. Yeah, it's that feeling out of place mm. because you never knew anything other than yeah. seeing a man make money and a woman just be like 
cool. We are good. Do you kind think of that's, thing. that's, that has to do with how you grew up and how you, you were taught about money and the things that maybe not explicitly. And the lack of teaching there. Yeah. And the lack of teaching, yeah. right? Yeah. I, yeah. I really think it is. And the conversation, we never mm. had the conversation mm. with my parents yeah. about money. Same. Um, yeah. I would hear them talking about money, but they were not talking to me. So obviously right. my input didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I would just never take does. whatever they're saying and then like <laughs> fill in the rest for myself later, which obviously was clearly incorrect because yeah. here I am 33 yeah. years later. I mean, we never had the conversation with my parents about savings, money, how you handle money, what you do in a relationship yeah. with money. Yeah. But also it was that thing where nobody tells you what you should do once you're in a marriage. Yeah. Besides let him build you a house. It was never even buying a house. Buying a house back where I come from is not a thing. Like yeah, you, you don't build. you build a house. You yeah. don't buy a house, yeah. you know? <laughs> let him build you a house and let him do everything basically. You just show up and make babies. Mm. Okay. <laughs> that's it. And mm. that's that it's a whole lot of unlearning that I yeah. have to do in my head. With this being said did you have that conversation with your parents before getting married or even while you and Kev were still long distancing did they ever sit you down or maybe i don't know like a random conversation about by the way mm. you know now you're an adult this is what you can expect kind of thing no one taught me about money no one taught me about money the only lessons i think i can like sort of remember is like you said like just conversations here and there so my dad also very traditional African man, he was also, you know, I make the money. My mom was a housewife, mm. is a housewife, you know, yeah. she still is. And, um, you know, took care of home life. Mm. But financially, my dad had and, you know, has all the money. He bought my mom a house. Yeah. You know, he gave my mom an allowance for us to, you know, to if we needed clothes, if we mm. needed food or whatever, he'd be okay this month, you know, how much do you need? And you know, it was that kind of relationship. And so for me, I don't know when I started to, but I was like, I love my parents, but I don't want that dynamic in my in mm. my in my marriage. Mm. I did not want a husband who just provides. Yeah. I never wanted that. Yeah. It made no sense for me, for my parents to have spent all of that money and time and effort to educate me the way they did mm. only for me to sort of sit, sit back, back and be and like say, yeah. okay now you make the money yeah you go out there you do the man you, the yeah <laughs> and then i just you know have babies like yeah. no now i'm saying it out loud i mm. think that was the 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 lesson that was the teaching that my yeah. parents gave me it wasn't an explicit one mm. But it was very much like my dad did make sure and because there's five of us and traditionally in our culture he educated all five of us wow even though some of his old school relatives were like why are you educating the daughters yeah you know ah, because they all expecting daughters yeah, to just, to just sit back get married. And let the why are you spending provide? so much money educating your daughters you should be focusing on the on the, the boys, boys. You know, my dad was always, and I really love this about him, like, even though he is very traditional and, like, you know, st yeah. traditionally minded, that was something he did not budge on. It was like, my daughters are going to have the same level of education mm -hmm. and opportunities as my sons. You know, you're supposed to be building a life together. That's yeah. the whole reason why you get married. You are creating a new generation together. Everything should be combined. You mm -hmm. live in the same house. You eat the same food. You share your money. You, True. You know? That's actually a very powerful statement. While we're on the topic about <laughs> getting married, being one, there's families. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And unfortunately, or should I say unfortunately? I don't know. Yeah. I think it depends on which side you are on. But we have families that get in our marriages. Yeah. And we have black tax. I don't know if you guys have black tax, yes. but that's a thing. <laughs> it's very real. much so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how are you guys navigating that? So that's How's that going? <laughs> it's interesting because obviously I have a white husband. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so black tax is a very like foreign thing to it's a bit I'm sort sure. of like huh <laughs> i'm sure how far does this go yeah. because he's always been very open 
and very chilled about how close I am with my family, obviously, mm. right? Um, so I have my sisters and my parents and stuff, and I'm grateful and thankful that all of us are self-sufficient. My parents themselves have been have done very well, you know, my dad in particular, but my mom obviously obviously has supported him and has helped him, and so mm. she shares in that success. Mm. But then there are the cousins. <laughs> <laughs> it goes that deep <laughs> yeah so then there are the cousins and then there are the you know the the, the, the rest of the families the, yeah. it, and 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 mm. so i think for my husband it was a bit of a readjustment in a way mm. trying to understand why i should be ex i am expected to help back home mm. Like that doesn't that doesn't happen yeah. with them, you know. Yeah. And I'm generalizing here. Yeah. I'm generalizing, but from what I know about you know the white community or white it families in general, happen. it's yeah. very nuclear. The families mm. are very nuclear. You know, mm. it's me, my parents, and my, my brother, siblings, yeah. and my siblings. That's yeah. it. And even siblings is like maybe two. Yeah, ma maximum. That's true. You know, that's very true. Um, so f first of all, there I am with my four siblings. Yeah. Um, thankfully, everyone is good. No one's asking each other for money in that mm. sense. But we do have cousins we do have other relatives and aunts and uncles and so on and so forth that have also been very used to us being the family that helps so in terms of my marriage i've had to explain that to him and there wasn't like a lot of like friction or anything for that but what we did agree on was this is where i will have a little bit of a separate kitty what was getting a little bit hard and uncomfortable was me explaining you know that so-and-so school fees are, mm. are due mm. and me and my brothers and sisters are contributing for that mm. he didn't get that mm. he's like but but why mm. and maybe we can only contribute this much i'm like i can't contribute just that, that much, much because yeah. then you know it's going, so it's going to be yeah mm -hmm. so that's when we agreed you know what our money is our money but i will have like my own little kitty mm -hmm. that i put away cash for the black tax yeah and so that's how i've managed to kind of to balance you know, so that yeah so that way i don't have to chat to him about it like yeah. babe so-and-so school fees are due yeah and he's he doesn't even know who they are and he, <laughs> you know what i mean like this is my it's cousin's child well, you that know, and he's never, like, he, he, he's might not, he might have seen them maybe at mm. the wedding and that's mm. it. And he can't remember who they are. So for him, it was just a little bit too, yeah. too separate yeah. in a way, yeah. you know, so that's what we've agreed to. It's not hidden. It's not secret. He knows, he about, knows it. about it. He's you just know? not like all over. Like, so how much was it? Exactly. Or? He's not on me about it at all. He's like, you do what you need to do. Yeah. I'm not going to get involved in that part yeah. because also I knew that it was going to cause problems problems mm. as well in terms of the dynamics of my family mm. you know it's not going to sit right for them to think like kev is involved in our yeah it's like, you know yes yes he's married but excuse me yeah like, <laughs> yeah like this is our this is what we do this is our yeah. culture like yeah. we don't ha we shouldn't have to yeah explain ourselves but now the the pinky bank that you have on the side are you building that up on your own as in like if you do find a separate gig or whatever that's your responsibility that's my it's responsibility. not tapping from the household money no so i have a responsibility or commitment yeah to contribute x amount per month yeah to the household budget okay. right and then obviously um i have my business and those, those are business expenses etc and all of that obviously I, I work for myself but i pay myself a salary yeah. so from my salary i um put aside or i i transfer um the the amount that i committed to for the family mm. that's priority mm. right for as in the family is in my family, family with my your husband household, yes yes the yeah. household then once they're good mm. once that's good that budget is like cool we're good this month or next month or whatever it is then it's like okay um i put aside x yeah into you have into that piggy that bank. little piggy bank so then when it's needed i'm not scrambling no, for cash that you must i need to look for money now okay like uh. <laughs> Exactly. Kind of sort of in a pickle here. You exactly. start coming up with lies because you can't tell him the truth because you know None he's not going to be comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay. That that actually makes a lot of sense. There's no getting out of black no. tax, unfortunately. Or if you do, it's it's but gonna. Then it doesn't sit well doesn't. on you also yeah. because then you sit back and you're thriving, but then your family is just like you know, and all because you got married. It doesn't make sense. You know, marriage like kids they change your life, but at the same time they don't really change who you are. No. I gotta say though 
it's it's still not an easy thing, especially with growing kids in Gauteng. God knows Gauteng is expensive and nobody gets it mm. back home in the village where where, where you're from Gauteng damn so where, where's the pot of gold yeah you know everybody sees you as a cash cow yeah and as soon as you try to make people understand they're like so you're poor in Gauteng <laughs> like <laughs> why don't you just come back home <laughs> no honestly <laughs> they were legit asking why don't you just come home yeah so you sort of like you you don't want to be seen as poor but at the same time you don't want to be seen as like i'm, I'm rich i yeah, got this because yeah. then when you do i got this everybody's like it's open season yeah go can get I, whatever yeah. you can yeah. and and yeah. you can't say no because then your uncle's like remember the one time mm. i i took you to your soccer practice and mm. you're like i never mm. even played soccer mm. but mm. do you remember the time it's a very tricky situation and i find it challenging in a marriage because dizzy is the last born i'm the first born yeah right yeah. i'm supposed to be the responsible one you yes. know because i'm a first born yeah. Yada yada, and I happen to be the only girl. And then he's the baby in okay. the family where yeah. everybody checks in on him. So we we have to sort of like compromise in a way. We still haven't found a working way, to be yeah. honest. I like the idea of having a piggy bank. You know, that way we're not chipping into the household money because right. it can be very tricky. These kids in their schools, they need something every other yeah, day. Yeah. And you don't always have free money waiting I to hear be you. spent by somebody else. I completely else. agree with you. You have to balance that act to say, okay, I, I can't be splurging because yeah. now I'm filthy rich. Yeah. But at the same time, I can't be like not splurging because then I'm not living my life. Yeah. I think it just really depends on what your what your goals are. Yeah. You know, what kind of life do you want? What kind yeah. of lifestyle do you want or whatever it is? Like if you are the type who's like, you know what? I need to show my money. I need mm. to, you know, I'm living life. Life is too short. Yeah. YOLO, YOLO, whatever, right? Yeah. yeah, Then that's what you, then fine. But know that if you're not saving, you're not investing, you're not doing any of that stuff, mm. your life might be longer than you anticipate. And what happens when you're older, when you can't, it's gonna be a very you know, go life. out and, you know, hustle and make that money and whatever, mm. you know. Mm. And then also with the black tax part, just going back to that, for me, it was also really important when I had that conversation with my husband was that he knows that I always put us first. Mm. He trusts that. So there's never going to be a time where, you know how you're saying, like, we have kids, yeah. and they, they yeah. need things every, you know, mm. there's never going to be a time where we need to do something for our kids school fees or even if say it's not just school fees because school fees is like you have to send you your have kids to, to school. Yeah. you have to right but say something like a birthday present mm. or a birthday party oh, or they whatever. need a costume because all of a sudden it's something costume whatever it is yeah. yeah i'm never going to be like you know what i'm going to take that money that's allocated to you as my mm. children mm. as our household yeah. and, and divert it, it and give it to someone else like you know it will always be, you know, I've got this much, you know, mm -hmm. when I have those conversations with my family and it's like, okay, guys, it's time to contribute to whatever, whatever. I'll be like, yeah. guys, this month, it's this is all I have. Yeah. This is what I've, yeah. what I've got to give, yeah. you know, and that I have to draw that boundary. I have I to ask you though, do you think you're a people pleaser or not? Me? Yeah. No. Okay. For sure Do not. you know why I say that? Because I, I feel like majority of the people that struggle with black tags yeah. are people pleasers. Mm. Because, yes, black tax is a thing. Yeah. That one we know for sure. Yeah. But getting out of black tax yeah. is difficult. Because as a people pleaser, you're thinking... If I don't give you this money, yeah. you're going to be so sad. Yeah. And then you're going to think I don't like you. Yeah. And oh my God, you're I'm a miserable. You're going to think I'm a bad person. And I'm a bad person because I didn't give you. And you go down this rabbit hole where yeah. you find yourself thinking, I have to give them this money. Yeah. We will figure out how we get that mm. costume. But just give Aisha this money because Aisha needs it. Or maybe I could be wrong. You guys let us know. Do you struggle more? Is it people pleaser to get out of black tax i i understand where you're coming from and yeah. i do i agree with you that there are times when i have conversations with some of my other friends about money and there's like 
you, you say that? You yeah. say you don't have money? I'm like, because I don't have money. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go into debt. Mm, because I can't. somebody else needed yeah, the money. Yeah, because exactly what you're saying, that I'm the one suffering, that mm. my kids are suffering. Like, I can't be doing that. Yeah. You know, and I think maybe that's why it, it works nicely with Kev, because he knows I'm not that person. Yeah. I'm, and I can recognize when people are trying to manipulate me. You know how mm. you were telling me the story of your yeah. uncle saying, remember when yeah, I used to do this? I, yeah. I'll be that girl to be like, okay, cool. Yeah. But I don't know how that now. Yeah, how does that fit in now? Like, yeah. we're here now. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and that, I think for me, that I, I, I've always really not liked mm. about our cultural yeah. sort of um you know habits for lack mm. of a better word you know mm. like manipulating yeah. people yeah. look at the end of the day if i have the money and i can give you i will give, give you give. yeah you know if yeah. i have it but mm. if i don't have it you also need to trust and believe me that, you that don't have i don't it. have it yeah and i'm not i'm not a bank i'm not mm. like like money is not like running out you know i just Calling turn the tap you, like Money's just coming, you know, yeah. I have to work for that money. Yeah. Just like everybody else. You know, you don't just have money just stashed. Laying around. Laying around yeah. and you've got In a basement somewhere. You know, you know <laughs> it's not like that. Like yeah. life is, has, even especially now, life mm. has gotten so expensive. Do you guys use the budget, you know, the 70-20-10 thing? Budget, what is that? Know? Like the, the savings? Yeah, is this save much 20% of, of how much you make. And we, then... no, we're not as strict about it as yeah. that so how we, do you guys do it we do it according to what we can afford okay and what's okay. realistic yeah you know i think there was a time a few years ago where we were thinking of it in in a bit more of a formulaic kind yeah. of way and we were getting into so much debt i'm sure because it's so stressful you're yeah. trying to keep up with this model that's... yeah and it was just like this isn't realistic so we actually completely started from the bottom again a few years ago this was when it was like 2021 or the end of 2020 yeah we completely scratched everything and we started from the bottom and we're like okay what is realistic mm. what you know how much do groceries actually cost because we were tell telling each other yeah groceries cost us like two thousand rand a month meanwhile at the, <laughs> at the end of the, it's like seven thousand yeah. you know it's like yeah. where is this yeah. how is so now we are budgeting mm. for two thousand rand grocery list mm. but we're actually eating 5,000 rand worth yeah. of food. Mm. And so we were starting to like, look at this, like this is not adding up. So mm. we were doing that, we were miss, um, what's the word? We were underestimating how much we actually spent on things. Yeah. And so our budget just didn't make sense. It, were, it was there on paper, it just wasn't It real. just wasn't actually, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we had to start from scratch and we did like some test months. Mm. We were like, okay, for now, we don't have a budget, yeah. right? Let's actually see realistically how much do things cost mm. you know our activities our needs and all mm. of that then we can do a budget from there mm. we can have a look and see okay we went out a bit too much this month yeah did we really have to go for dinner every week or whatever mm. it is maybe once a once a month yeah. okay cool so those things we were able to like cut down on then we cut down on and then that became our pool of savings yeah so you guys do the budget together yes Okay, and, and how's, how's the husband taking that? Is he like comfortable with that? Is oh, he... for sure, for sure. I'm meeting him. You remember I was saying yeah. I have a meeting yeah. this afternoon. Yeah. It's with Kev, so we can go through the, the finances. Because okay. we, we skipped last month. It was a busy yeah. month. My, my dad was here and an aunt. Yeah. So we have to catch up this month. So we do it every month. So you guys have a meeting in your calendars yes. to talk about the budget and yeah. the money. Yeah. That's really nice. So you guys know exactly what's happening. Yeah. You don't just assume there's no, money no 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 <laughs> no no no. we know and he, like, like i was saying you know he also works for himself mm. you know he's an entrepreneur and so we both of us don't have this monthly salary mm. you know like from a company yeah. it's us yeah you know so you obviously are the company we, i am the company <laughs> yeah. so obviously we have clients and you know mm. people we work with and all of that but we need to be even more sort of aware of our income, the different mm. streams of income. Is this one dead at the moment? Eh, yeah. It's a bit quiet. This one's doing really well. Okay, cool. I'm going to focus more on that. You know, and so we have those catch ups. Like, yeah. I'm like, babe, 
how's it going on your side? Mm. And he asks me the same thing. And, you know, this, this month's a bit slow, but yeah. I've got my, you know, runway. That's yeah. all good. So we're all good. And then it's like, okay, so that's how we do it. So it's there. The budget is, yeah. you know, a Google sheet. We do it every single month. And then if we've got time, we, we project for the next month as yeah. well. We do it together. And I like that you guys are able to, you're comfortable enough to say, you know, it's slow for me, mm. but, but I can, you know, this is coming and this coming. So you set realistic expectations yeah. and you're not afraid to say that it's a slow month. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go and get a quick loan oh, no, so that no, it no. looks like it's a good month. No. And then in the good month, you go pay back the loan. No, you know? none of that. Mm -hmm. And trust me, it's, it hasn't always been great. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have been like really bad, bad months, really yeah. bad years. You know, mm -hmm. last year was really rough on us. Mm -hmm. Financially, emotionally, mentally, all of mm -hmm. that. It was really, really rough. It was one of those things like, okay, how, how do we scrape what whatever it is that we need to, to get to by, get by. Yeah. you know, what do we need to cut out, mm. you know? And, um, you know how it is, you have a baby and it's like, the hospital fees are just yeah. insane. Everybody's just like, give me, give me, me too, me too. And we were on medical aid, yeah. but there were all of these hidden costs, extra costs that were really like, what? Yeah. Unexpected. So all of that, it, it, that's life. I have to be in a marriage where I am comfortable to do that. And I want him to be comfortable as well. Mm. I don't want to find out about any funny, funny gambling problems. When somebody's outside to repossess like, the car. You know what I mean? <laughs> like then... no surprises. Okay. Yeah. If you're broke, you tell me you're broke. I'm not going to mm. leave you. Because you don't have but, money this month. Yeah. You know, did you guys have as individual entities, did you have any debt before getting married? Married. no you didn't no tell me more like how did you not have debt um my parents paid for my education ah, fully okay. wow that's amazing yeah 100 percent from yeah birth until i was 24 i got my master's all of it was sorted that's amazing so that was a great gift and you know my dad said that this is this is my gift to you i'm not no, gonna honestly, buy you a it car is a gift. yeah he's like you know there's some other you know we have some tribes in tanzania where um your parents like traditionally when you get married they'll yeah. buy you a house or they'll buy you a, a plot of land or something along mm -hmm. those lines um, my dad was like, I'm not going to do any of that. Mm. I am paying for your education. Because he and knew. And one day you're going to look to back, look back on and this say, oh my God, that you. was amazing. <laughs> no, it's an yeah. incredible gift. Yeah. Honestly, you must yeah. tell him I said thank you on your behalf also because <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it's the same with Kev. His parents also paid for his um, education. That's incredible. Mm. Then you start your future on a clean slate. Yeah. You choose to mess it up. Right. <laughs> right. Not, not because you had to, but you chose to. <laughs> we chose to. And did you get any debt then after being married? Be yeah. Be house, cars, Yeah, loans? of course. Our, our house, um, yeah. our car as well. That's another thing. It was mostly from a financial perspective. Like, do we really need two cars? Mm. Mm, we live in an area where you know, it's like easily accessible to yeah. get public transport. And, uh, and then also one of us was always working from home. Mm. So we didn't actually need two cars. So that was like, okay, we're going to be saving whatever it is, like 6K a month or whatever. Mm. We um, bought our house. Mm. So we're paying mortgage mm. on that. But that's it. Um, we did get into some credit card debt. I'm going to be honest. Mm. We did get into some credit card debt a few years ago. And again, like last year as well, because of like like everything that was happening yeah but whenever we've been in those situations we've had to like prioritize it like because yeah. you know how it is like the you debt leave, just yeah. creeps if if you leave it to stay for longer Ooh. it just keeps growing it just keeps growing we actually did a course when was it again like around 2021 or so mm. we did a course called wealth yeah. i'm not sure if it's still um if it's still happening it was yeah. all online and um it was a fi financial expert who did like marriage counseling when it comes to finances and stuff mm. like that so he put a course together and so we we did that course together yeah to learn how to offset our debt to learn what's good debt and what's bad debt yeah. what assets and you know all of that like financial terms that a lot of us don't know about mm. until adulthood yeah. if at all until you're in debt like, <laughs> until you're in what? debt you know <laughs> that that really really helped us to make yeah. sure that we were on the same page about everything and just from a financial literacy perspective mm. my husband has been has been reading he's been watching a lot of like you know content about finances and stuff mm. and i finally after that course i was like okay 
like be committed I, I'm, all I'm in. also in yeah. it as well because I can't just be leaving it to him yeah but and also not to not to get too dark yeah right <laughs> but it's also reality mm. one of us is gonna die true before the before the other yeah and we have kids yeah so that was a very important um actual like lesson or mm. task that we had to do as part of the course like yeah. to for so both of us understood how to manage our accounts how to manage the whatever inheritance that we were going mm. to get you know as being being beneficiaries of each other's like estates yeah um and how to actually like use that money because yeah. a lot of people fall into this thing of they do, especially women mm. they've never handled their finances they've never been a part of the budget and yeah. the planning husband dies and then all of a sudden and then it's like she doesn't know what to do yeah. and she's got kids to feed and yeah. educate and 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 it's like the money is there but it's mishandled yeah so that was also a really important thing for me as well as a yeah. woman to understand what would you say just in closing, what would yeah. you say is your takeaway from that course? Like mm. if somebody was to ask you for like solid advice, I am here, I'm in debt, I want to get out. What do I do? Mm. You know, how, how do oh. me and my husband get out of this so we in a better place and maybe tap into, you know, how you guys got out of your credit card debt okay. and, and all of that. I think maybe the thing that stood out the most to me, and, and this is something they, they even said in the course, that a lot of the times people will pay for things on store credit or say the credit card, and they'll just make the minimum payments mm. and they think they're fine. Yeah. But the problem is you if you keep doing that, you will never pay the, the debt yeah. off. Yeah. Because the interest on it just keeps compounding. Yeah. It keeps compounding. And so the whole trick to paying off credit, not just credit card debt but just debt in general mm -hmm. you know even if you take a phone contract if you're yeah. allowed to always pay more than the bare minimum so if you're supposed to pay a minimum of 500 rand for example on your credit card every month you know pay if you can mm -hmm. pay a thousand mm -hmm. and if you can pay more then pay then more, more because it'll really help you so that you're not paying over a long period of time you're paying mm -hmm. in a short period of time but then you just you just hammer it. You hammer it. Exactly. You, you just kill that debt. Mm -hmm. You know? And so that's that's our biggest takeout. We've implemented that. We have we actually have two budgets. Mm -hmm. We have the budget where we're like, we're good. There's money in the bank, there's money in our reserves, there's mm -hmm. money, whatever, whatever. Um, and then we've got the can I swear? Yeah. We literally call it the get the f out of debt. <laughs> budget okay okay all right. so in that category it is literally we are surviving mm. we've got food in the fridge the kids school fees are paid we've got cash for you know like toiletries basic yeah. toiletries yeah. medical aid and the car repayments and the mortgage anything outside of that is zero wow it's absolutely zero zero socializing zero clothing you know because we have clothes yeah we don't need to be yeah. shopping for clothes mm. it's not a necessity zero clothing budget zero grooming we call it grooming budget so i don't go to the hair salon i Can't don't do my nails. nails yeah you know like everything is diy that's how we are able to shave off like mm. thousands of rand mm. if we need to pay something off like yeah, quickly quick, so quick. if it's it's a credit card like i said instead of saying okay i'll spend 500 here but i'll go to sorbet and do my nails for 500 yeah. no i'm like i'm not going to sorbet wow. that 500 that i would have spent say doing my nails at sorbet is going to, to pay off something. pay off the debt but where do you get the discipline from you know is it, is it just the <laughs> i don't know like where do, where do you buy that discipline you don't buy it life teaches you sure when you have gone like rock bottom in terms of like you have nothing i was unemployed mm. i was unemployed for a whole year mm -hmm. when i moved here to joburg mm. i could not find a job and we were living off just off of care salary we've been there where we've wanted to buy the woolies chicken you know for dinner but we're like, like let's just go to checkers and get a 
packet of chicken livers. You know how cheap chicken <laughs> yeah. livers are? Yeah. That's what yeah. we would eat. You know, because we're like, we need to eat something, but yeah. this is what we can afford. Is mm. it the 100 rand chicken? Or, the or is seven it the rand chicken seven livers? rand chicken livers? <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Yeah. So that's where we get the discipline from. And so sometimes we joke with each other, mm-hmm. like, yo, babe, this is one of those months we're just going to have to eat chicken livers, you know? Like, because yeah. <laughs> like, we know it's like an inside joke, yeah. you know? And thankfully, it's never gotten to that point again. Mm. But we've been there and we're like, no. Yeah, you're not going back there again. We're not going back there. And it's that thing that keeps you going. Yeah. It's not worth it. I'm like, 500 rand for nails at Torbay? 500 rand to kill off this debt. It'll always win. Kill off the debt. Yeah. Kill off the debt. Yeah. And then, four and months later, five Sorbet. months later, then I could go to Sorbet. Yeah. Guilt free. I'm not yeah. sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay for I'm this? Like, yeah. you know, like, and you're not trying to keep up with the Joneses. No. I think now we no. live in a very challenging times of social media where mm. I just been on holiday this mm. month mm. and then two weeks later and then again she says she's going on yeah. another holiday. Yeah. Yeah. How the hell? Yeah. You know? But you know, living <laughs> in this time now it's very yeah challenging yeah. i kid you not not a day goes by where somebody hasn't messaged me and said how did you get out of debt and i'm like i am still paying off my car that's debt mm, you know mm, i'm still mm, in yeah, debt yeah don't take my feed as my life it's not like you said it's that discipline mm. you need to want to get out of debt yeah you need to remember that if you carry on with your sorbet nails those chicken livers are gonna be very They're like coming. hello yeah we are here that's exactly it you know so you you <laughs> kind of have to to choose mm. and and stay committed to your choice because mm. it's only temporary it's temporary that's exactly it. it's temporary and that's what my husband and i always remind each other when look it's not like it's all hunky-dory like oh well we're in debt la di da no <laughs> yeah. there are times when like one one of us is like damn you know like how did we get here mm. you know we feel mm. bad or if someone is not feeling bad the other one is going to hey 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 remember yeah, yeah. no chicken yeah. livers yeah. right yeah. so we hold each other accountable and but when somebody is feeling a bit low about it and stuff then it's like babe it's temporary mm. we just have to it's just like a few months to, you know, that's what we did when we were getting out of debt. It took us a long time to get out of credit card debt. But we kept, you know, supporting each other and telling each other it's it's temporary. Mm. Once we get that done, then you can go and get your sorbet nails. Yeah. And you can buy this bag or whatever. Yeah. And I feel guilty about it. Yeah. You yeah. know. You'll be dropping some real gems here today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for, for having me, here. friend. You know, we can talk forever. Yes. As <laughs> but, always. you know, time is money. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> so we're going to have to stop right here. But you guys, I'm interested to find out from you. What did you learn from this episode? Right? What is your key takeaway? for me personally is the pinky bank okay the black tax pinky bank that's that's what i'm taking away and then of course the you know it doesn't have to make sense to the next person Mm. your story about chicken livers and the discipline it's your story with your husband and makes sense to you yeah and it it doesn't give me the right as all to come Mm. into your marriage and say Mm. but it's just so bay nails Mm -hmm. what's the big deal Mm -hmm. and trust me i've had those people you know yeah i've had those comments as long as you're on the same team and you keep that in mind you'll be okay thumbs it up and again let's keep the conversation going in the comment section down below and we'll see you guys next week same place same time and that's it for today bye besties bye (laughs) shake hands (laughs) what year is this where people still shake hands i don't know i was quite low below